Today, we'll be going through how to install Rocky Linux 8, the latest edition, which is 8.5. We're here on the downloads page where we're going to get the installation image of Rocky Linux. We're gonna go down to Rocky Linux 8, and in the section where it says architecture, you can choose between the minimal or the base OS package. Pick for your architecture. They have x86 64-bit and ARM64, which is the ARCH64 architecture. For my server, I'm going with the x86 64-bit base operating system installation. You'll get this tree here where you can select ISO to get an image. And then finally, for installation purposes, we can use the Rocky 8.5 x86 64-boot ISO. Find where you want to save the download. Now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB, CD, or DVD of my choice. Belena Etcher is an easy to use application available on Linux, Windows, and Mac. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can of course use any other application that can create a bootable disk such as UNet Bootin or Rufus. I just find this one the easiest. I'm first going to select image and then I'm going to the location where I just got done downloading Rocky Linux. Rocky is here in my downloads folder, Rocky 8.5 x86 64-boot. I'm gonna select that and hit open. Next, I'm going to select a target. And at this point, I'll put in the USB CD or DVD that I'm going to flash this image onto. And you'll notice that it usually picks up on anything free. If you have more than one device, you can click on change and then select the proper device that you want to flash this image onto. Just make sure you select the proper one because Anything and everything on that USB CD or DVD will be erased completely in order to put this image on there. So make sure you have a backup of your data before flashing onto that. Once you have the proper storage disk selected, you can hit continue. All right, now you're ready to flash the disk. You'll be asked to give administrator privileges. Go ahead and press yes. After you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install Rocky Linux 8 on and then insert it into that computer. After that, you'll boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and make the disk the first to boot in your boot priority. And now since my flash is done, I'm going to do just that. I'll show you what my BIOS looks like. Yours might look different. And on my computer, when it's first loading up, it's going to ask whether I want to boot in a BIOS. The key for my BIOS is F2 or the delete key. Yours might be something different in order to get in a BIOS. Make sure to look it up for your particular motherboard or computer. So since mine is a newer UEFI based BIOS, Yours might be different, but I can use the mouse and mine, making it a little more convenient. What we're looking for is to change up the boot priority. Conveniently enough for me, it's available here on the right-hand side. So I can look through and try finding the USB that I just got done flashing on, but it doesn't seem to be in one of the top four here. So I can either click the boot menu option F8, but let's go to the advanced mode for me, F7 because this might be what your BIOS more closely resembles. On mine, I have tabs up top, so I can select between the tabs. I have main, AI tweaker, advanced, monitor, and boot. Yours might say boot or boot priority. Make sure to find this in your BIOS and then go down. You want to select your boot option number one, to be the storage disk, either USB, CD, or DVD, that you just got done flashing. So I know mine's a 32 gigabyte USB. So if I look through the list, I should be able to find something that resembles that USB. And here it is right here, my verbatim store and go 1100. It's got about 32 gigs. I know this is the correct one. So I'm going to select storage disk. If you have multiple, avoid selecting the partitions, select the entire disk. So this one's the entire disk. I noticed that by seeing no mention of partitions. Anyways, I'm gonna press enter on this and this should be enough to allow us to boot into our live environment or installer. I'll make one more mention here in BIOS. If you are trying to install Linux, you'll want to make sure that you have your secure boot settings disabled or set to another OS besides Windows or else your system will keep trying to boot into Windows regardless of what you have put into your computer. Also, if you can find fast boot on your computer, you might want to disable that one as well if you're having trouble booting into your Linux environment. And if things have gone correctly, you'll get to this screen where you can select between install Rocky Linux 8 or test the media and then install Rocky Linux 8. If you select the second option, it'll check the integrity of the disk and make sure that 
the image is not corrupt. You can select that. I'm going with the install Rocky Linux 8 since I know it's good. All right, to start out, we need to select which language we want to use for our server. I'm using English, English United States, which is the default language here. If I want to search for another language, I can in here, such as Spanish, just an easier way to find things. After you've selected your language, click continue. And now we have a few things to go through here in order to get things set up. First off, we have the network and host name. We'll click on that and enable our adapter. This way we can have internet access. Otherwise you cannot go through this installation because it, re it requires mirrors to be enabled and packages to be downloaded from those mirrors. So we're selecting on over here for this toggle. Then you'll get an IP address. And if you need to additionally configure things here, let's say you want a static IP address, click on configure and edit the ethernet adapter settings through here. DHCP is working fine for me, so I will choose done for this. Now this should actually fix a couple things, which is on the software side. Currently it's downloading information to get the software and installation source. Next, I'm going to go to system and select a disc. By default, it will have pre-selected a disc where you want to install Rocky Linux on. I only have the one disc with 128 gigs, so I know I'm all good. Just make sure you select the proper disc. What's going to happen is this disc will get completely erased and then Rocky Linux will be installed over top of it. That's a warning that you will lose any and all data that is currently on the disc selected where you're trying to install Rocky onto. So make sure you have the correct one selected. As far as storage configuration goes, we'll select automatic to make things easier. You can make additional space if necessary or encrypt your data as well by setting a password for the disk. In order to look at the full disk summary, go down to the bottom left and click on it. And this helps you select where you want to install your bootloader. The default is fine. Since this disk doesn't have anything on it, we don't really have to manage multiple operating systems. Anyways, after you have yours selected, make sure you have a check mark then hit done. That will save the configuration for the disk. And now we're ready to move on to our next category, software selection. Under software selection, there are many different environments and pieces of software that you can download. A lot of us might want a basic web server or perhaps some other tools, but you can install these all post anyway, fairly easily with just a few commands in the terminal. So I don't necessarily suggest installing anything. You want a minimal environment for your server. You'll get to set it up post installation anyway. Now, what's important though is the base environment. So there are different options here. You have the server with GUI, server, minimal installation, workstation, virtualization host, and custom operating system. Typically, you'll want something between the server with GUI or server. Depends on if you need a graphical user interface and desktop in order to use the server, or you like managing it through a terminal or console, then server is fine for you, or minimal installation. That doesn't install hardly anything for you. That way you can get the most out of your resources. Today, since we're beginners, I'm going with the server with GUI option. That way we have a graphical interface and desktop that we can interact with by the end of this. Anyways, with that being said, I'm gonna hit the done button and continue on. We're almost done. We just need to set up a user now. For the root user, we'll click on it and then set a password for the root user. Make sure to put a strong password in and you'll hit done once you have that password. You can also create a user instead of just the root user, which I will do. I'm gonna add one in called Savvy Nick. I'm gonna make them a super user as well so they have root privileges. I'm going to also put a password in and then a second confirmation for that password. You can get into advanced settings for the user and specify a home directory if necessary and what other group groups they belong to. Anyways, I won't do that because all that I want to do is available here. I'm going to create that second user and that's about it. I'm ready to start installing Rocky Linux. We've gone through the setup process. I'm going to click on begin installation and now we just have to wait for Rocky Linux to get installed in our system. It will take a little bit, anywhere between 10 minutes to maybe even an hour, depending on the mirrors that you have access to, your internet connection, and the speed of your computer. So give it a few moments while it goes through, and we'll finish this installation process up soon. 
And once the installation is complete, you'll get this reboot system button presented with a complete in the status bar. So before we reboot the system, one thing I'll mention is as the reboot process takes, you'll wanna remove the USB CD or DVD that is your installation media from the computer. That way you can actually boot into the installed image on your disk. So we're gonna hit reboot system and give it a few moments to reboot. Again, if you haven't already removed that installation media, if you forgot to, you can shut down the system, remove it, and then start again. You'll also wanna make sure that the storage disk where you just installed Rocky Linux is selected first in your boot order in BIOS. That way it knows which disk to boot into. And you may or may not catch this screen where you get to select between the rescue mode or regular old Rocky Linux. I'm gonna select Rocky Linux, press enter, and let things load up. It says we have to accept the license, so we'll click on that and accept the license agreement if you agree with everything, and then hit done. Now you're ready to finish the configuration, and that should boot us up into the desktop. I'm being asked to log in, so I'm going to select my user, put my password in for the user that I created, hit sign in, and congratulations if you made it this far. You have successfully installed Rocky Linux. Make sure to smash that like button for me. Let's go through the welcome screen. I'm gonna select English as my language. Then next, followed by which keyboard I wanna use. I'm selecting the English US. Great, select whatever you need and then hit next. Privacy, you can turn on or off location services. I'm going to turn them off. Don't need the operating system knowing where I'm at. I'm gonna hit next. Now you can connect any of your online accounts if necessary. Not for this server install, I'm gonna skip this section. Finally, we're ready to start using Rocky Linux. You'll be welcomed by the Getting Started GNOME desktop dialog, which helps you use the desktop environment. I'm gonna walk you through it real quick so you can exit out of here. This here is your desktop environment. On the top left-hand corner, you can click Activities, which gets you some default stuff to start with. On the right-hand side, you have workspaces, so if you want more workspaces. For your desktop, you can create more and move things around them. In the middle, you have a search, so you can search for applications. Since we have Firefox installed by default, there you go. When you search for it, it gives you a list of various different things, such as the firewall configuration, which is an important one to know about, so make sure to check that one out. Anyways, on the left-hand side, you have your default web browser, your file manager, software center, help, and terminal. Following that, you have Show Applications, which shows all the applications and utilities that are currently installed on the system. You, of course, can add and remove these as necessary. In the middle top, you have the current date and time with any notifications that you're getting from the system, including a calendar on the right-hand side. And finally, on the right-hand most side, you have a drop-down that gets you the volume settings, your wired or wireless connection settings, your current user settings, including logging out, then you have system settings, logging out or locking the computer, and shutting down or restarting the computer. So that's it. You have your server set up with a GUI available, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a bonus. Let's install a web server here, make this a little useful for those of us that are wanting to use Rocky Linux for a web server. We'll start a terminal up because this is the easiest way to install things. I'm going to type sudo dnf install httpd. Now this will install the Apache web server onto this server or computer. Just press enter and you'll be asked for your password. If you have administrative privileges, you can use the user. I set that up, so perfect. I'm gonna put in my password and let the package get installed. In order to install, we have to type in Y and press enter because it's asking us if it's okay to install these things. Yes, it is. It's asking us again whether it's okay to install things, sure. And once it says complete, we are done with the install process, but now we're ready to do just a couple minor setup things, including starting the web server. So in order to do this, let's enable it by doing sudo systemctl enable httpd. That will allow the system to start up the web server next time you reboot. But to start it right now, we're gonna type in sudo systemctl start httpd, and that should start it right away. We can check by doing sudo systemctl status of httpd, and that will tell us whether it's active and running, and it sure is, so great. I wonder how we can get to the server. Well, let's check out 
activities, open up a web browser, and I'll just type in localhost in the URL, and that should get me the HTTP server test page made for us by Apache, showing us that we are, in fact, currently hosting a web server. You can also type in 127.0.0.1, which is the same thing, and it should load the same page. Look at that, everything's working. Let's minimize this for a moment. We'll change directories doing CD. Then we'll do var www html. Notice there's nothing in here. So we'll create something. I'll just use vim to create it. You can also use nano. Let's just use nano, a little easier. I'm gonna call it index.html. And in this file, I'm just going to put hello world for the time being. You would wanna write out your website's contents in here in an HTML file. I'm gonna save this file and I got a permission denied. That's because I should have done it with sudo. Let me rerun the same thing with sudo in front. And now I'll do hello world, save the file, save the modified buffer and reload my test page. Notice how now it says hello world on the screen. Congratulations, you've set up your web server. You now have access from other computers to your web server via port 80. Just make sure if you need HTTPS enabled that you enable that through the firewall or port 80 if it's being blocked. Everything else is set up and running. Awesome job setting up your own local server, including a web server for website testing. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. And make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.